Hey, welcome to DIY Prop Shop. I'm Dustin. I'm gonna be doing some prop recreations using everyday materials that I can find around the house or at local hardware stores or thrift stores or wherever. I'm gonna show you some of my tips and tricks and some of my DIY techniques, so let's get started. All right, today I'm gonna to be making Tony Stark's arc reactor. This is the one that he wears in his chest in the Iron Man movies. So it's a pretty basic design. Probably gonna base it off of an LED cap light so that, that can turn off and on and then kind of build up around it. And I actually think that maybe um, one of those sink drain inserts might have just the right shape. Something that hopefully can light up around the edge and then some copper wire kind of wraps around the edges. All right, so overall these shapes are pretty simple. So I'm just gonna head to the hardware store and see what I can find. All right, this is what I've got. Mostly miscellaneous pieces, but um, the best part of this is this kitchen sink strainer. Um, this was only a couple bucks, it was like five bucks. Now this is plastic, so make sure you get the plastic one because they do sell metal ones, but this cheap version is plastic and we're gonna be cutting it, so it needs to be plastic. Um, the other main component here is the LED tap lights. Um, so I'm hoping that these are gonna fit inside the strainer. Um, we'll find out. And the rest of this is just miscellaneous stuff, which I will explain as we go. By the way, I always keep all plastic things because this is a really cool shape. You never know when you're gonna wanna use that later. <laughs> oh. Okay, so this LED um, tap light that I bought doesn't exactly fit. So if you can find one that fits, like this is one, this is just mine. I, I don't wanna destroy this one because it's like my actual light that I use at home. So you, if you can find one that fits, awesome. If you find one that's a little bit too big like I did, we're gonna have to modify it a little bit, just a heads up. All I had to do was unscrew the outside rim of this particular light. Oh, yes. <laughs> it even looks better. This all depends on what kind of light you get, obviously. All right, so I've taken a look at all my pieces. I think I got it figured out. I'm just gonna start with some of the modifications. This insert actually fits really well upside down in here, so you could leave it at that if you wanted, but I'm gonna take it a step further and cut this rim off. I'm gonna cut the edge off the other piece. I'm gonna drill a hole in the middle, and then this will pretty much start taking shape. All right, when you're doing your DIY projects at home, one thing that's really handy is a big self-healing mat like this. Um, that way you can just protect the surface of whatever you're working on. All right, so to cut the edges off this, I am gonna use this Dremel, which is a rotary tool. If you don't have one, um, you can just use a little hacksaw like this. It'll just take a little longer, kind of cut in there, but I am gonna use the rotary tool. All right, so I'm gonna make this inner hole a little bit bigger because I'd like it to be slightly bigger than this ring I'm gonna put in here, so I'm gonna just kind of shave out the inside of this a little bit more. I think it melted back together where I just cut it. All right, so all I had to do was make some little strips for the sides here um, that will hold this inner ring into place. So this metal stuff is very handy. I use it all the time. It's actually called plumber's tape, and it's used for hanging out pipes and things, but it comes in really handy for DIY projects. And if you get some heavy duty shears like this, you can cut it really easily. So it works great just for miscellaneous parts and things. Um, I kind of cheated and cut them into individual pieces. I was drilling little holes, but the hole itself needed to be as wide as the strip of metal, so I gave up on that and just cut each strip into two separate pieces. All right, so I found these little screws that look just like the kind on the arc reactor. They're not normal screws, they have kind of like a hex shape in there, so they're called socket cap screws. This is like 69 cents for a pack of two, so I got a few of them. So I just went ahead and sprayed the edges black, but left this part uh, silver just by putting some masking tape on it. Uh, by the way, I like to use flat black paint because it dries really fast. If you use gloss, it kind of takes forever to dry. So I just painted this like 30 seconds ago and it's like already dried to the touch. All right, so for the glowing edge, um, I decided to use this kind of clear tubing. It's polyethylene tubing. This is only 19 cents a foot. 
so I just bought two feet. But I figured if the light kind of hits it, it'll sort of glow because it's this foggy white. This stuff is awesome for projects and super cheap. I'm having kind of a hard time getting the tube to go into a nice perfect circle shape because it is kind of stiff at that small length. I cut it down to the length and then I used a little metal screw in the ends to sort of just act as a connector and I just filled both ends with a ton of hot glue hoping that might kind of hold it in shape. But then I just put a ton of hot glue around the rim and then held it in place for a long time, hoping it would stay pretty solid. Okay, so along the edge of this glowing tube um, where the copper wire goes, um, I'm gonna put these little clamps. I found these. This whole bag was only two bucks and um, they're kind of the perfect shape. So I'm just gonna put them on there individually and kind of clamp them down and then put the copper wire over it. All right, so I just realized that once this is all glued together, you wouldn't be able to access the batteries if they die later and you wanna change them. Um, I just thought about that. So I think I'm gonna cut open the back plate entirely so that way the light can be secured in there. You can just open up the back, change the batteries if you need to, and then put it back together. This is gonna be attached here permanently. So now, whenever we wanna open and close it, all we gotta do is screw it on and screw it off. To attach the light itself into the base, um, I'm gonna go ahead and drill some little tiny holes so we can just use the existing screws. It depends on what kind of LED tap light you're using, um, so this might be different for you, but I figure I'll just use those three screws and it'll just stay right in place. Bing. Oh yeah. Okay, so for all of these um, bits that go over the light here, what I decided to do was buy this bundle of copper wire. This is just um, stranded wire, but inside is a bunch of little tiny bits of copper wire. This is only 59 cents a foot at the hardware store, so I bought two feet of it because it's so cheap, and then I'll just kind of cut them and glue them across the top here, and it will look like it's wrapped all the way around. Sweet, look at that, okay. So yes, this copper is supposed to be wrapping all the way around, but we're just faking it. Because we have these clamps on here, we can't go all the way around. All right, so it kind of took a while, but I went around the whole edge doing that with the copper wire where I just glued on a little bit, cut it, bent it over, glued it into place, and I did that for all 10 of them around the whole edge. Last one. This represents how much time it just took to do this. <laughs> okay, that took over an hour. All of the copper is in place. Um, the rest should go pretty quick. So. I did find a pack of brass washers, which um, were a couple bucks. You could just have regular washers um, and then just spray paint them with gold. That's what I would normally do, but I saw these and they look cool, so kind of taking it up a notch. This came right off of the LED light. It was inside here. One last thing that's gonna go right in the center. Um, this, you can buy a huge roll of it. It's just like a thick kind of metal screen, like a mesh. I knew I had a bunch of this stuff. I use this when I do like miniatures. It makes really good fencing. You could buy an aerator um, that would go on the end of like your faucet that kind of like the water goes through. So I'm just gonna cut a little piece of this um, and then glue all those pieces together and that will be our whole top portion that we'll screw onto the base. <laughs> So the last thing I'm gonna do is make the little uh, power cord. Um, they have stuff you can buy at the store. I'm just gonna dig through my junk box and see what I can find. I collect a lot of junk, but there's a good reason. Because I'm always using it. And I know I've got lots of wires in here. So this LED tap light happens to have a little like touch on and off, which is kind of cool. I always save old switches from old junk before I throw it away because it's really easy. It's usually just two wires, but you could wire up your own switch to put on the back and you can have an on and off switch. It's really not that hard, even if you're not like into electrical stuff. I think I'm gonna use that. Oh no, here, this is perfect. Look, that's cool. You got black and red and gray. Hey babe. Check it out. Oh, nice! All right, there we go. Looking pretty good. Um, that is our DIY arc reactor. 99% of the parts came from the hardware store. I think I spent around $30 total on this whole thing. So let me know in the comments if you have any other questions and I'll try and help you out. And let me know in the comments what other props you wanna see me make. I'll be taking your suggestions. So be sure and subscribe for more awesome content and I'll see you back here next time. Bye.